Welcome to my frost tube. It's already fourth. So hi. Oh. This is me, Laura from Vilnius, Lithuania. It's in the middle of Europe, if you don't know. So if you want to go and Google it, Lithuania, Lithuania, I will post it somewhere like uh, here. Uh, I will write my name, my country name. So, okay, so uh, I'm very happy to be here again. This is my fourth floss tube uh, video, which means that um, that means a lot for me to me that um, I can that I'm showing something to you and you like it and you're commenting and you're like supporting me a lot. So this is like amazing, 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 amazing. Thank you very much uh, for all of you guys. Um, it just amazing. I'm super happy. Happy, happy, happy. Okay, so today we need to talk about a lot of stuff. And this video, I guess, it will be much longer than my previous ones. I don't know how long it will be, but uh, we'll see. Uh, so yeah, so today, uh, as this is like the middle of the month, uh, so I'm not showing my progress uh, on any project, but I'm just talking about some 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 topics so uh this time i decided to talk about uh, uh my organization how i'm organizing my projects and how i'm uh helping myself to stitch faster with this organization so cool yes please t stay tuned uh tuned um to see how i'm doing my stuff uh before that i want to answer to a few questions from comments from uh, on my previous video so uh, I was mentioning uh, like in my last video I was mentioned I was like happy and mentioned a few times that um, I'm preparing few patterns uh, for my pattern keeper so basically uh, and there was like the questions uh, to, for me to explain how I'm doing that so um, and the, now I'm, I won't be showing like the tutorial how I'm doing that, but if you are interested in it, so maybe I will do this like next time uh, on my next video. Uh, but uh, for now, I will just say that basically um, I have a few uh, projects which originally came uh, as a kits with uh, printed patterns and I decided to, to do it like uh, to dig digitalize them to uh, and to import it to my pattern keeper so um, I'm doing it with in the worst way <laughs> I guess um, because there's like few things uh, there's like a lot of uh, pro programs uh, apps uh, and softwares which can help you like to make uh, patterns like from out of photos or whatever but in my case, uh, is I if I need to recreate the existing pattern, like paper pattern to digital co copy, so there's like a bit more restrictions to, to uh, restrictions or less ways to do it. Also, I'm using a MacBook uh, computer. It's a bit different uh, than using Windows. There's even less opportunities to do that. Um, so I googled out and I also read the suggestions from the Pattern Keeper founders. What they suggesting? Uh, so there's two ways to do of doing that. So one way is easy way. I haven't tried that because I believe that I just thought that it might not work uh, like uh, how I would like to use it. So basically, there's like the one option is just you're just like fo making the photo out of of your pattern basically and importing it straight to pattern keeper and then like do some adjustments and then it lets you to mark the symbols there but uh, there are but in this case you won't be uh, able to select the symbols and uh, and highlight the symbols there so uh, it might work but uh, depends on how you are like stitching it if you're like stitching in the diagonals so maybe it will it will work or some kind of i don't know uh, 10 by 10 squares or 20 by 20 whatever if it's like not not the big sections you're stitching on so this should work but as i'm like stitching in a bit like more bigger areas basically so i decided maybe that it's, this is not the way for me so i also figure out that it's possible to uh, purchase uh, or to find and in my case i purchased them um 
Max Stitch program, which is also uh, the same program works for Windows. It's just called WinStitch. I will leave the uh, link uh, in my description box. Uh, so I purchased that program uh, and um, as Pattern Keepers uh, founders mentioned that from this program, it's easy just to export the patterns for the Pattern Keeper. So I decided to do that. Uh, I purchased a program and now I'm like collecting, uh, recreating the same patterns. Like, I'm recreating the uh, patterns there basically. So I'm taking the, uh, the pattern. Uh, I'm reading all the symbols and then like copy copying the same uh, the same looking symbols there. So it's very time consuming, uh, kinda. Uh, but it very depends uh, from the pattern. If original pattern is shitty printed, so it's not like uh, bright or it's very small symbols there. So it takes longer because you need to concentrate even more just to finding out what symbols what symbol you need to copy, uh, find it like on the original pattern and then like uh, make selections in the program. If the pattern, uh, if original paper pattern is clear, uh, so it's uh, much easier. So like for example, my Van Gogh pattern looks like this. It's super small. This is the way. Uh, if you want some, if you want more explanations on this, let me know. Okay. Another things, few things before I start to my main topic. So uh, I want to say hi, hello, hi, hello, Joe from Belusha Stitches. Uh, she asked me uh, to tell something more about the rocket standing uh, behind me. So background story is that I have few hobby hobbies. Uh, the my first hobby hobby, my first hobby was uh, and it still is. Um, uh, is space, uh, space exploration, whatever. I mean, everything was like related with the uh, with, with the space uh, astrophysics. Ba I'm not like proper um, scientist or whatever. I just like like to uh, imagine what's there, how it works. I like to think about it. I like to think how it works. I'm watching a lot of documentaries uh, on the on this on this topic. So uh, my husband knows. Uh, my husband knows that, uh, and um, he also supports me on this. And sometimes he does very nice presents for me. So, so and this time, this rocket is made of Lego. So the Lego kit was um, to remember the uh, the fiftieth fifth year five zero year anniversary for uh, moon landing. Apollo moon landing. So this is Saturn V rocket. It's super huge actually. It's like one meter uh, or 90 centimeters. I don't remember, but it's almost about one meter uh, in size. Uh, it has like all the sections how how the actual ro rocket worked uh, out when it's like when it was like um, sh Uh, when the ro or actual ro rocket was launched, so those like stages, uh, it's like possible to open it to see what's there. There's also like moon lander inside, so I mean it's fun. So basically, <laughs> I received this kit uh, as a present. It made me uh, super happy because I also like to assemble like Lego <laughs> bricks, so that was fun. Uh, another thing about Lego, uh, so okay, so Joe, so if you want to Google it, you can find it and then you can have a great fun just to assemble it. Who, yeah, yes, cool. The uh, Lego's fun, <laughs> super fun, colorful and fun. The only thing is sometimes I'm just trying to avoid uh, assembling some Lego stuff because because of this noise when you're like searching for the for, for those uh, Lego bricks, so it's just like very sharp sharp noise. Which sometimes when I'm super uh, when I'm tired, it just gets on my ears, and I'm just trying. I'm almost getting, going crazy. <laughs> ha! Okay, so uh, welcome uh, Joe to my channel. I I like to see you here. I like to see your videos also, so it's very fun to meet you and um, very happy to meet you. Okay, <laughs> not going far from Lego things also. So the other thing I wanted to show, I wanted to uh, 
share my joy. Other thing, the latest thing I received uh, for, from my husband is like very nice flower bouquet, also from Lego. So, uh, so basically he gave me like the big box uh, with very nice picture on top, like, okay, this is the flowers and it won't never like um, dry out or die or whatever. Very first thing you need to do, so you need to assemble it. So I did and it's like super pretty. It's super pretty, very nice, very super nice. I like it a lot. And it was very, very, very fun to assemble it. Uh, it's like very colorful and I just love it. And it won't. It will never die so that's cool another hobby is like the puzzle puzzles but i won't be talking about that sorry if you want to know more i can do it my million next time anyway okay so so this is this is it no it's not <laughs> no it's not um let me check uh, on my list I prepared the list for me, uh, for myself, um, what I need to talk about. I said intro, I said uh, thank you all, thank you all my subscribers, I have more than 800 already, 800 subscribers, I mean it's a huge amount of, 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 huge amount of subscribers. I don't know anything about subscribers, I mean, I don't know anything what's, what, how it works like this type of subscriptions if i'll have like more than 10 more than 200 more more than 800 more than 1000 whatever so i don't have any goals for that i don't have any plans for that i'm just very happy that somebody is interesting and interested in what i'm talking so let's do this um uh, yeah Another things maybe I want to shout out to Kylie, Kaylee, Kylie, Kaylee, Kaylee. I will I will pick the right one. Um she's super cool. She's from uh California, Los Angeles, I think. I think she's from Los Angeles. Sorry if not. But she's going to move to Baltimore at some point. She's doing very great, nice videos. She's like playing with this very small ukulele and she is like improvising stuff like while playing it so it's like it's amazing she's like uh, fu very funny uh, uh, she's doing few nice projects uh, one of of those projects is like uh, gray style mono mon monochrome image she's uh, what she turned out into pattern basically uh, from her weddings so from her wedding um, day she's like doing that it looks amazing she's stitching in diagonal um, uh, technique it's very pleaseful it's very satisfact you feeling like very it's very uh nice to watch how she's working it sometimes she's like doing stitch with me uh or she's she's going to do some live stuff also uh so if you don't know her go and check her usually her updates are very short um, so it's like very short thing just you like oh okay she's here again sorry sorry my cat is here so she wants to have some attention anyway so go and check her out her, her um, details uh, in my description description box also she's on on the instagram so you can also chat with her so she's cool uh, nice person i'm very happy to meet her Ta -da! okay so maybe enough about shout outs uh of course i can mention darcy because darcy became my subscriber at some point which is Whoa, because everybody knows Darcy. Look at me. What the fuck? <laughs> yes, she likes to bite everything, basically. I'm happy when she's biting not my hand, not my fingers, but something else. So I'm taking the moment. 
Okay, guys, let's do that. Thank you, sir. Okay, sorry for my cat. She's like, I guess she will come back. Anyway, I guess everybody knows him, but if you still don't know, so there is Darcy. Darcy Cameron. He lives in Canada. I don't know anything about Canada, so sorry for that, but he lives somewhere in the Canada. Uh, I don't know he, that he likes uh, so everything what's related with Christmas. Happy for him. Anyway, I just wanted to say that he became my uh, subscriber, which is a huge thing for me. Hi, Darcy. Okay, so Darcy, I know that everybody talks about Darcy, but uh, this is my shout out. I'm very happy. I'm very happy that he's he that he will spend some time and watching my videos and and that's cool. <laughs> uh, and another okay, another shout out. Sorry, uh, another shout out just before my um before my main topic. So I just wanted to say hi, hello to Australia. Amanda from Pennington Terrace. I love her a lot. And love I like her because she just. Okay, there's like also like the story, not the story. Okay, the story, not the story. So basically, um, I'm very happy just to say that she st she, she just started uh, the new pattern uh, because I kind of um, um, inspired her uh, to start this uh, pattern from uh, from the same artist uh, uh, Borda the Not Adrian. Uh, my blue marble is so fragile is the same artist uh, and she picked another one uh, of his paintings uh, from un from unconventional cross stitch uh, website so uh, the another very nice blue uh, very nice lady with big eyes and she's like uh, crocheting not crocheting she's uh, she she's knitting she's knitting the snowflake uh, and it's it's again, it's very melancholic, very nice, uh, very beautiful uh, artwork, and you just can't uh, stop looking at, the, at those uh, at those artworks. Uh, I just love uh, that uh, artist. Uh, I have few other patterns in my wish list, which I will start after my uh, blue marble is finished uh, next year. Next year. So uh, we'll see how it goes. So. Uh, Amanda, good luck. I'm leaving her information in my uh, description below. If you don't know her, go and check her. Another thing, uh, okay, so uh, go and check her. And uh, I don't know how you are thinking about this, but uh, I like see I like her uh, style of shooting. She's shooting herself like, and this is actually a good point. If I don't like to see my face, so maybe this is even better because she found find out very nice very good decision so basically she's shooting her uh, uh she's showing her uh tors part without showing the head body part with the arms um and like from 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 the neck basically so it's like she's not showing her face but all uh, always she's like using some very nice um, t-shirts like with lemons or with uh harry potter related like t-shirts and she works on nice patterns also so go and check her out uh, if you don't know her uh, it's worth of doing that I think and say hello hubby okay so we have so much so much things to talk about so let's start about my organization I will show how I'm doing it maybe you already know this stuff and that's okay uh, but uh, maybe I'm kindly suggesting you to watch and see what what I'm uh, showing to you, because at some point I'm uh, I'm using some tricks and tips and tricks uh, which might help you, or even if you are doing something differently and you think that it 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 might work even better. So please share the information with me because I just love to learn. I just love to find out new things and I just love to grab those things and um, personalize them and use it like um, in my better for my bet for my good <laughs> for my good okay so I'm sorry this 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 looks my like my air okay so organization and truly believe that organization is the key 
for uh, your faster stitching. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how fast you are doing your stitches uh, on the fabric with like the floss uh, with the threaded uh, needle already. But it's kind of counts, but it's not. It's not the main thing because usually you're spending too much time on other things like for stitching the floss, for finding the right floss, for threading the needle, for uh, starting the thread, like for starting stitching with this with uh for uh ending the floss on the canvas you know and these kind of things so this uh is like the most time consuming thing which in the end uh adds up in 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 very uh, long period how for you not to stitching but doing like these additional actions to the stitching so um i like to stitch so I'm trying to optimize and minimize, uh, uh, utilize uh, everything what's what is around the stitching, including those like searching for the floss and like threading the needles and blah blah blah. So this stuff uh, because it's just like the additional thing. Nobody sees how you're doing that, and and you can't show it on the on the final picture. But uh, the time you're spending on stitching your final product, sometimes you're using too much time on doing other things but not stitching. So I will show you how I'm doing this and, uh, and I will try to explain why it works for me. Okay, so I'm always using some kind of stand, floor stand uh, or sofa stand or lap stand just to hold my, my stitching so that I could stitch with two hands. This is my uh, decision, this is my option uh, selection. Uh, I like to stitch in, uh, with two hands. It helps me to to uh, to monitor the thread basically, to uh, uh, so then to avoid the tangling of the thread. So this is also a good tip. Uh, if let's say you are stitching with one floss, uh, like you are doing uh, stitching on uh, 25th, uh, 25 count uh, even weave, and you're working with one floss full crosses so uh and you're stitching with one one hand so usually this floss will be ta uh, tangling uh more uh quick frequently if you want to see uh, this process uh, let me know i'll need to figure out how to how to make a setup for myself to to to, to show it to you but anyway it's it just worked for me hopefully it might work for you also this is first point. Another thing, which is also important. There's, uh, of course, uh, it works for me. Maybe it doesn't work for you, so that's also okay. But I'm just I'm explaining how I'm why I'm doing this. So I'm usually selecting the res restricted area of stitching. Uh, I will explain you. What does it mean? So basically, I'm showing like my example, one of my works. So uh, when I'm stitching, when I'm trying to stitch something, so I'm choosing some kind of very, uh, not too small, but not too big uh, section, let's say from one color, so from similar colors, uh, from some kind of one object. So like, let's say like this is like the flower, uh, this is the flower, this is the leaf. Uh, here it's, it will be like some kind of a small, small uh, hummingbird bird, uh, or something like that. So basically I'm like selecting one object and I'm trying to stitch it um, fully and then uh, to move forward. If I see that uh, the threads, uh, like the, the same uh, thread can be used for, uh, for more symbols like outside this, uh, this area, I'm usually uh, parking those threads uh, there, not uh, and not stitching like all all over the place, because if I'll do that, so that means I will I will be stitching a lot of stitches by using the same uh, needle uh, threaded needle. That's okay. That's like it's plus for you because you're not not to, you don't need to like to stop search for another symbol for another color or whatever. Uh, but basically, if I'll start like stitching all over the place, so I won't be seeing the the finished um, section so fast, basically. 
and by seeing like something uh, by by seeing the part which is finished it just uh, brings you just uh, more joy uh, more more um, more satisfaction basically that you already finished something and and you moving on like on another colors another part so this is my uh, kind of say my decision to doing that that works for me i'm happy by 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 seeing the the, the finished object there it doesn't look pretty like in this uh, in this um, stage, but uh, it helps you uh, for the uh, for the future. Whenever you like, con you will be continuing like on st on stitching on uh, on different areas of the painting. So basically, a restricted areas it works at some point faster mentally. Uh, phys and a bit physically, I guess, because you're not like use using the same time by finishing the other threads, but you are just uh, you're concentrating on one part. Okay, uh, another thing uh, which will take some time about the threads. What I'm doing with my threads, with my floss. So if I'm getting um, the pro pro process uh, project for myself. So I'm trying to uh, to get all the flaws at once, just to have everything while I'm uh, when 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 I'm starting it, just to have everything ready for my project. So I guess everybody does some kind of similar things. So I'm like uh, getting the flaws. I'm bobbinating uh, the flaws on the. Uh, this nice it's very simple ones actually this is carbon car to carton carbon uh, bobbins uh, here oh shit i just lost the i just lost the place it should be somewhere here so uh, i'm like bobbinating everything i'm uh, organizing it chronologically from i'm usually working like this so this is like the smallest uh, the first numbers and then I'm going like this it just somehow it works for me the best and this is the the l last number but I believe I'm doing a bit differently uh, like bobbinating itself it's a bit different than usually everybody else uh, else are doing that uh, so um, I will show you how I'm doing this so currently I'm preparing for my um, he, uh, next hate uh, I mentioned about this in my last video so that from this disintegration um, so uh, I have like my floss here I also like bominated some of the of the floss but now I will show you my uh, tips uh, tip how I'm doing that and I will explain why because everything is related so basically getting your floss very nice color uh, finding the the end of the floss next to this like bigger yellow uh, tube etiquette this is my end of the floss this uh, sometimes yeah so this is the longer uh, like next to this yellow where where the number is uh, grabbing on the uh, holding the floss with your fingers like this and you just like pulling the floss out of this uh, original uh, skein pulling everything out and then you are like reaching the next end grabbing your two ends together and monitor um, it's nothing wrong it's nothing wrong uh, the loop I'm reaching the loop the first loop I'm adding it to next to those two uh, loose ends I'm repeating the action I'm holding the 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 floss once again the second uh, loop of two uh, two, uh, two skeins already I'm adding next to the 
first one and I'm like finding the uh, the last loop with uh, of four skeins here. So four loops, three loops and two ends. Two loose ends. Cutting it uh, cutting it and having like four sorry eight meters skeins. Next step. Uh, I'm dividing this skein, these flosses in like into uh, into separate skeins, but I'm like uh, I'm dividing it like four times. So basically, I'm keeping two skeins per per time. All is like equal. Everything works very good. When you need to do uh, blended uh, colors, uh, if you're like working with with some kind of patterns uh, which ha uh, which has uh, blends so it works perfectly because all the all your flaws will be equal you don't have to uh, to measure each time by cutting it's uh, it's pre-cut it already so it saves you time it saves time believe me yes you're like spending some time like by by doing this action but whenever you like doing when you will do uh, when you will do uh, like fifth or sixth color you will get the point and you will doing just you will do it like very quickly um while watching tv or do i don't know talking on phone or whatever it's, it doesn't matter so it's 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 not it's not uh, it's not hard work hard thing to do so but it's very useful for and very convenient for your uh, other steps later on so basically i'm like doing uh, the same action with all my frets when the bobbins are ready i'm like i'm placing them those in in the in the box but when you're like uh, having all your flaws here so each time to search for the uh, exact flaws to un unwrap it like uh, uh, from the bobbin choose one floss and then uh, thread the needle and do the stitching then when the if you're like not using all the floss uh, from your needle so get get back to this uh, this box find the the floss uh, bobbinate it again it takes time so I'm using uh, organizers my floss organizers so what is it here so basically I'm like hanging those two skeins two out of eight skeins uh, fr from each color from each bobbin on my floss organizers. I have the floss number, uh, original DMC numbers here. It's written like uh, like from the smallest to the, until the, the biggest ones. So I have two skeins per color. So that means that I have like originally it's uh, 12 threads of floss uh, here. This organizer is always next to me, next to my stitching whenever I need to find the color uh, for my like next symbol or whatever. So I'm se I'm searching for the for the right number. If you're using Pattern Keeper, so it's easy to see uh, the 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 original DMC number. If your pattern uh, contains some kind of code uh, code numbers, like uh, let's say for example, uh, if it's like kit, it's kitted like uh, like for example. Gecko Rouge, they are like uh, not 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 showing the original uh, floss number, but they are like they are number numbering in uh, like uh, one, two, three, four, five without uh, showing original numbers. So that's also okay. So basically, you can like have like one, two, three, four, or you can have the uh, symbols here. But uh, for me, it's always easier to search by number or some kind of um, sequence. It just how it works like your brain works differently so like if uh if let's say i'm like stitching on the uh same color heavy area so i might be hanging more skeins here by knowing that okay i will need more floss of the same color for the period i'm st uh, for the time of the periods and, and i'm stitching on that uh, on on the current piece uh, and i will i will need more uh, floss of the same color I'm trying not to hang uh, too m too much of the floss because I'm trying to keep them from dusting, from uh, from damaging. I don't know, uh, you know, tangling and whatever. I have two animals, so there's a lot of dust in my home uh, and like animal here and whatever. So I'm just like trying to keep uh, 
to keep it easy, to keep it uh, compact, to keep it um, organized, uh, and to keep it easy for me to search. So if I'm like uh, I'm uh, running out of floss, I'm going and grab my stash box of the floss of the floss for it, for for the project. I'm taking out that that floss card. Uh, I'm untangling it and uh, and I'm already having like two two skeins already pre-cut and I will know that it's like exact same uh, length uh, and uh, it will work for my for my project for all my projects basically that's very cool I'm very happy about this about this organization and it saves a bunch of time okay let's do a test for example I'm using my pin so I'm finding this color I'm grabbing one stand of floss and I'm just like pulling it out and then I'm treading the needle and this is how it works it's easy it's very time time saving I don't need to go into the box each time I don't need to like find the thread, like uh, untangle it from there, uh, unwrap it from here, uh, bobinate the, the rest of the thread, and so it works for me. So I'm like uh, preparing this uh, similar organizers for all my projects. You can use like this kind of, you know, foam things. There's like option to use uh, plastic organizers. Uh, I will add some kind of pictures next to it but the idea is the same so basically you're keeping your threads next to you it's easy to to get the access to it it don't you don't have to do a lot of actions to get the the thread you need like the color you need and it's like fast uh, and easy i'm doing the same with all my projects so basically if my gecko rouge is kitted uh, uh, with floss like it's originally packed like this you can use this uh, as a also as a as a uh, as like thread uh, organizers it's okay but again i'm like repeating that there's like bunch of floss and i know that uh, that it might get like uh, dirty uh, because of the of the dust and it, it might like uh, get tangled and like you know like worn out at some point so i'm doing the same thing um, so i'm keeping this uh, original uh, like whole stash of the thread in this in the safe uh, safe and uh, dry place i'm getting my uh, floss organizers and it's always next to me when i'm stitching it it's like uh, it's easy access and uh, again the same the same story this is uh, the idea of the thread organizers then another thing Let's say you are like stitching full coverage, full of confetti. Usually it's like you need to stitch like few few stitches on, the, on that. Darcy, I guess this is for you because I don't know how you're like organizing your floss. But uh, as you're like stitching on those small, small, small um, uh, 10, on, uh, 10 by 10 squares. And you're like starting and ending the thread each time. I would like to see your organization. It just like blows, my, blow, blows out my mind that you're like spending so much time on starting and ending threads each time anyway so let's say you like just started uh, the thread you stitched few stitches and you need to end the thread there is no uh, more stitches around the area you're stitching so you need to like to fix the thread there so not to re-thread the needle or whatever and spend more time on that what i'm doing i have my needles organizers with uh, threads in it it doesn't look nice i know sorry don't be scared of it but it's super convenient actually if let's say you finished you finished stitching with like one color and you still have so much thread on your needle it's like it's not worth of, of throwing it out there's no point to go back into your uh, uh, stash uh, of colors uh, and like to unthread the needle and like to wrap that on on the bobbin or hang it like on your organizer so what i'm doing i'm having the my needle organizer and i'm just sticking the needle with the thread in the organizer here so that means whenever i'll need this thread again 
uh, I will come back to this organizer. I will find the symbol. I will grab the needle with the with, with the thread, and I will be continue stitching. So I'm saving the time uh, by unthreading and like doing something with that thread. I'm just like having everything next to me, so it's like ready ready to use. It's very easy. It's uh, it's very time saving. There's uh, also various options what I'm using for 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 this um, uh, for these organizing organizers so this is for my human uh, hummingbird uh, project which is like bunch of colors uh, like this is the colors there's like a lot of blend blended colors so uh, so it's just like time saver uh, for for a uh, very big time saver because you don't have to like to to prepare those blends each time uh, if it's like already like if you still have uh, floss on your needle and so then you're just parking your needle uh, with the floss on organizer what I'm using for these organizers so it's very easy <laughs> easy and cheap and very easy to get the uh, uh, materials for this so the um, so I'm using some kind of the box as a base uh, for uh, for this uh, particular uh, project, I was using like the box from the candies. <laughs> I don't like candies a lot, but for this purpose, I was eating candies. Plus, <laughs> so basically, um, so the base is the the some kind of box. It might be this uh, the big box if you have like big key with an, uh, if you have a lot of symbols. So it might be like the bigger uh, box, but it should be. Um, kind of with low edges it will be it will help you to get the access to your floss a bit easier and it will be like more convenient and ergonomic for you to to to, to, to have it other option maybe it might it might be smaller one uh with the numbers i painted uh, i'm sorry with the, with the symbols i painted my by myself uh and uh, for this um as example, this is for my uh, blue marble. I'm using like the the box from my from my tablet, Panchet tablet. This is my tablet. I bought it last year. <laughs> uh, so that works fine. It might be super small box if let's say uh, this is from my Gecko Rouge uh, Bohemia project. For this one, as it's like the numbers from one to eighty-four, so uh, I was I made it like very compact, um, in very compact box, uh, and it also has the lid basically. So I can, whenever I'm not using it, I can like store it like this, or I can like um, prepare another organizer from the lid. Also, it's possible. So, so this is um, there's like any option whatever works for you this is from my hate oh, it's again it's super bright this is from my hate um i'm using the sim uh, i i cut the symbol from the legend um and i uh, so and i prepared like the the, the base uh, for it so um so it's small symbols but you're getting used to it the the bigger symbol the easier to uh, for you to find it uh, find find it basically but uh you can use whatever works for you anyway but but it's really like time saver like life time saver very good tip what uh so basically you're like getting the box uh getting the uh the symbols uh in whatever uh way you 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 like either you're like painting it like i did on my uh on my uh blue marble or you're like getting it from from the um key from the pattern or writing the numbers if it's if if it's easier uh if it's like this kind of organized also you can like write the color num original color numbers if you're like using some kind of I don't know, a pattern keeper or whatever, that's also fine. You need to find your, your best way to do it. And then uh, I'm using the simple or very ordinary sponges, like you're using those for washing dishes or something. 
which works the best when you need to stick the needle in basically so so you're like uh, you're fixing those sponges in your box you can like stick it with a two-sided tape or what or you just can like put it there uh, if it's like compactly put in so it's almost like uh, holding there so it, it's not falling out if you have a bit uh, space around so maybe you you should stick it with two-sided tape uh, j just to save your nerves and not to n not to fix those uh, sponges each time accidentally like dropping this uh, or or turning it around or whatever so you're sticking it so basically you're like placing those those sp sponges next to each other um, covering it with, with, with this paper with symbols or, or numbers or whatever and then you're using it as a like the part for for the pa needle parkings with with the threads easy cheap super time consuming uh, <coughs> so easy cheap super time saver really this is the best uh, which makes me happy and which saves my time I told almost all my secrets. I hope that you will enjoy it and you will use it. Uh, you will find the best way to use it. I mean, it helps for me a lot. I hopefully, uh, and as usually, I don't know how others are doing it. So, so it's worth sharing anyway. Maybe somebody, uh, maybe it will help for for someone to find the best way. Okay, then uh, I will talk a bit about some kind of tools I'm also using. I'm not using a lot of tools. I'm just using whatever I need just to do the job. Because I love the stitching. I love the progress. I love I love to see how the needle goes uh, on the canvas. How the small excess appears or like small like 10 stitches or whatever. Yeah, I just love this. I love the sound of the of the of the thread passing the 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 fabric whatever. I just don't like every I like everything, but I would prefer not to spend too much time on side actions and it affects my stitching speed in the end. So okay, so tools I'm using. So I'm having my uh small scissors which should be uh as comfortable as possible. I would suggest you to find the nice scissors for you which works. Then, how you call this thing? Um, the thing you are using for to thread your needle. So it's needle threader, th needle threader, threader needle. So um, I'm using Mill Hill. It's uh, it's very simple one. Um, I'm usually I'm buying it like two. Uh, it's like two in the pack, uh, but I'm using this one for more uh, than a year already and it just works fine and uh, uh, it doesn't stick st uh, to the to, to the uh, my needle minders so i'm having this fob it's not the fob it's like very <laughs> funny looking uh, creature it helps me to stick it to to the needle uh, to, to the some kind of magnets or whatever so so use it it will saves also a bit of time for you each time by threading the, your needle use it use it well then of course needle minders as you can see i'm not using one needle i'm using a bunch of it just to save my time so i'm using also a few needle minders per time and then the other thing is this very nice box this is the uh, trash bin for the floss I recently discovered the uh, the option uh, to have small uh, box of threads uh, and stick it on my canvas basically so I'm like putting the box on uh, my canvas and then from the uh, other side I'm like using the magnet so basically it sticks uh, on the on the canvas it's next to my uh, stitching area you might have to, to find the place where to put those and uh, thread ends uh, so it's always reachable it's always convenient to have it there basically so but uh, before that I was like having my uh, my bin trash bin somewhere next 
uh, next to me uh not on the canvas but on the on the on the sofa edge or or on my window panel I don't know how to call it so basically it's some it should be somewhere around okay so basically this is my organization uh it helps me uh more to stitch more and spend less time on finding threads <laughs> uh, getting threads uh keeping threads and this kind of stuff I hope you will enjoy it and will use it, will try it. If you need any more advice or more explanation on some kind of details, so let me know. I will show you, uh, I will try to explain you in the next, next time. If possible, you can share how you are doing this because it's very interesting actually. Especially, especially you, Darcy. I'm sorry to name you a few times already, but... Uh, I'm just very curious how you like keeping all your organization. What is be behind your nice, uh, very neat looking stitching <laughs> when you're like showing your progress processes. So it's like, it looks very neat without any uh, additional like floss hanging. But uh, what is the background, like backstage of this? It would be very interesting to see. For me at least for me i don't know about the others but um but yeah so uh and yeah joe from belushi stitches it's also a question because she posted one of the uh one one photo of of the bobbin by saying oh i need to stitch like x amount of stitches and i have only this so i'm just i'm always curious by seeing this curious by seeing this kind of photos are they using those bobbins as a need keeping like working project organizers or whatever so it's just interesting uh, but whatever works for you is the best way uh, for you to work on but if you find my uh, uh, organization interesting and worth of trying so uh, use it well <laughs> use it well the very last I guess it's very last thing I want to discuss with you guys. Guys, everybody is like, not everybody, a lot of you guys are doing some kind of sales, stitch alongs and these kind of things. And a um, few weeks ago, I guess I, I kind of mentioned that I can't find uh, uh, any sale that I would re really would like to work on uh, because I have so many projects going on and to spend maybe more time uh, on doing it so it's just I just couldn't see myself of doing it uh, because I couldn't see the the piece um, which I would like to have in the end but it's like another thing maybe it's the idea of, of doing it it might be might be fun um so i mentioned this to emma x stitching uh, on her comment and she kind of said it okay but you if you can't find whatever you like so maybe you need to create your own <laughs> and that was that was said uh, some time ago and i was like uh saying ah yeah maybe not maybe yeah but i was still keeping on thinking about it and then at some point i received comment from uh, cross stitch happy a uh, guest originally she's from czech 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 republic but now she lives in uk and she, uh, and we kind of like we were talking with, uh, with 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 her and with anastasia and uh, that there is not much of uh, europeans here and maybe we need to do something uh, together just <laughs> uh, for fun and uh, i said that yeah we need to think about and then uh, I fa uh, I checked uh, her profile on Instagram and I saw a very nice uh, pattern from uh, Mike Powell. Uh, and it just like blew my mind because I was waiting for uh, for the kit from this Michael Powell uh, Powell for a few t uh, for, for some time already. And I 
just received it and the idea is that um, maybe we can do something talking about Sal and the idea is what I would like to suggest to you maybe you would like to join me to do something related with Europe so I received my kit uh, which is from Michael Powell uh, it's called Venice Palazzo one but it has like two more things and I have all of the kits already because I ordered it like uh, because I, w I knew that I would like to stitch it like as one big piece it's super uh, it's very nice looking one it's very fun I guess the back stitch will kill me at some point <laughs> but I want you to have this piece uh, at some point because it's super funny uh, this like quirky quirky uh, houses so okay so um, I just received the kit sorry for the sound it's uh, this uh, plastic it's I hate the sound I'm thinking maybe we can start a sell related with Europe so that means that I don't want you all to buy this kit no it's not necessary a thing just to stitch on some something which is related with Europe city scenery or something related with cities there's like bunch of patterns and from hate and from other uh, there's full of like city silhouettes on on Etsy or maybe you're already doing something uh, uh, you're working on some kind of pattern which is related with Europe in some place either you're like stitching on some kind of um, uh, band poster or some kind of uh, writer uh, some kind of portrait or some kind of I don't know whatever uh, city maybe this would be interesting because it will allow even start searching about the Europe try to find out what's there uh, there's like you know Paris Eiffel Tower or what uh, like this like huge famous things uh, like Rome Colosseum and whatever things join me on this adventure we can just have this journey like a cell <laughs> I don't know I don't know when I'm going to start it because I need to prepare my uh, pattern for uh, pattern for my ca pattern keeper so uh, maybe before my birthday which is like mid of Ju uh, the end of July so let's think about it I just want to hear your in your uh, ideas about this would you like to join me on this this style might be very like long lasting uh, because if I'll start this I won't be finishing it like soon so <laughs> it will be I will be starting this anyway uh, as my as my birthday celebration I think so uh, I'm just like thinking maybe it's a good point just to start uh, this kind of stitch along with you guys and uh, and have this nice uh, nice little adventure by stitching uh, and maybe uh, posting the the photos on the Instagram uh, with, with some kind of nice uh, hashtag which I still need to think of maybe so yeah so I need to think more about these details but anyway just let me know about uh, what do you think about this and would you like to join it doesn't have to be any full co coverage or something it might be uh, whatever thing uh, you would like to stitch so yeah so I guess this is it it will be it's a long video I guess I'm very happy that you joined me. I'm hope I hope that you found something which is interesting or useful for you, and you can use it uh, for your own good. I hope that uh, you enjoyed my video, and um, and I'm very happy to be here and share my knowledges and my uh, know-hows and my uh, how-tos. <laughs> and uh, my wishes my wonders my basically myself if you like please please come back <laughs> yeah and find me on my instagram which i'm 
using uh, a bit uh, from now. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your um, comments. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your subscriptions, which is amazing. I'm super happy that it's happening. I'm finding new friends. Oh, the sun, the sun, the sun. It, su it was super rainy from the morning and now it comes. Here comes the sun. Okay, uh, my phone is dying, so thank you very much, uh, very happy, I'm very happy, and very happy, and let's meet soon enough uh, on my next video, where I'll be showing my updates, what I managed to do on the Stitch Mania, uh, Stitch Tania, Stitch Mania, Stitch, Stitching Month, basically, so, let's see, bye!